All right, so everybody, I want to thank everyone for uh, for coming in tonight uh, to see our uh, our presentation. We have terrific uh, presenters. Uh, let me thank our sponsors, which is uh, Photo Shelter, um, Pro Photo Daily, Epson Printer, uh, Archive Magazine, AIAP American Photography. Thank you guys always for your um, your endearing uh, support. Um, also, everyone, if you could su subscribe to Projections NYC on YouTube, that would be terrific. We could always use that. Uh, we have two terrific presenters tonight. Al just to let you know, Alec Vigneault could not make it. So we only have the two terrific presenters on tonight. And who, who wanted Alec to be here anyway? So we we're not even going to miss him. Dear friend. Um, so we have Bruce Byers. And we start off with an old dear friend from forever ago, actually, um, competitor and, you know, only did excellent work that we lost too many jobs to now that I think back on it, Beth. Uh, but we have Beth Galton. So, Beth, the floor is yours. Okay. Um, I want to first thank you for asking me to speak. This is really a privilege, and thank you. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. Share. I'm right. Okay. So I want to just start by giving you a little background. I've been, I've li I live in New York City and I've been a commercial photographer shooting food and still life for almost, for over 35 years. And I first fell in love with fine art photography in college and have continued uh, working on my own personal projects as well as doing commercial work. What I'm gonna show you tonight is a personal project that I've been working on during the pandemic. Beginning of March, 2020, I had a few commercial jobs booked in at the end of the month. COVID was in the US, but not in, the, in New York. As my shoot dates came closer, I started obsessively watching the news. The anxiety of what might happen started to gain momentum. And three days before we were scheduled to start shooting, the city closed down and New York became the epicenter of the pandemic. I quickly went to my studio and retrieved my camera and a few stands so I could take photographs at home if I wanted to. And like everyone, I was stuck in my apartment, glued to my computer, reading the news, looking for something positive to focus on. And what I found were these endless analytical maps and charts showing how COVID was moving across the country. They seemed important, so I began to screen grab them, not knowing what I would do with them, but I just thought I need them. And, like every, and, and after a while of collecting and seeing how COVID was infecting our world, it dawned on me that these visual changes were not just red and yellow lines, but showed where millions of people were being affected. And what these charts, and maps left out was the immensity of the emotional toll of those touched by the pandemic. It became apparent to me that I had to use these in my photographs to help me process this devastating experience. We all had to find a new way to put some order into our world and shooting these images became my way of coping. I began shooting these photographs uh, the beginning of April, 2020 and spent the next year and a half exploring the subject and my feelings around COVID. <clears throat> so I took a corner of my apartment next to south facing windows to create my own little studio. It took me back to basics and reminded me how little I actually need to take a photograph. And necessity is the mother of invention. So as you can see, my cooler became my computer stand. And because my tripod didn't go high enough, I used my side tables, which happened to all be the same height, so I could get up high enough. Yeah, Beth, can you hit your full screen? I did. You know that? It, it, it's not showing its full screen? I don't think so, right, Jay? Or is it? No, it's not. Uh, you can try hitting Cloverleaf L. It should uh, full screen. Is that no? There you go. No, not, not full screen. That's full screen or not? No, I, I can see the edges of your PDF reader. So oh, go to so view and then full screen, or you can hit Cloverleaf F, uh, Cloverleaf oh. L. Do you see it now? We see it. It's just not full screen. Okay, because I've been doing it on my screen. It looks full. 
Huh. Okay. It's not full. It's not full. No, I see all the, you know, the trims, the zoom and everything. Huh. That's so weird. Uh, Can you hit Cloverleaf L? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, then, then, that's, then you're fine, Beth. Okay. Try um, unsharing and then uh, share again. Okay. Let me do that. I bet that's going to fix it. And how's that? Same. 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 All right, okay. so go with it, Beth. It's fine. Okay, let me try one more thing. I know what I did. Uh, so I start. Okay, so now I'm going to share. And if this doesn't work, I'm, I'll keep going. There we go. Okay, yep. I know Beautiful. what I did. Okay, thank you. Okay, so. <clears throat> So I started printing out uh, these screen grabs and I, I first started on copy paper and decided to incorporate tulips that were past their prime that had been ordered, that had been delivered with my fresh direct order. Botanicals have always played a really important role in my photographs. And I thought by using them in these, this photograph, it would begin to speak to the humanity of those who were affected by, the, by COVID. I wasn't quite happy with the paper and wanted a more ethereal feel and ordered sheets of glassine paper um, from Staples online. Um, and so I, whoops, you know what? I'm sorry. My, I'm getting out of sync here. So, okay. Um, I was, so I was, so I started printing on this uh, glassine paper which had more of a translucent feel to it. Um, and it, so I stuck this in a patch of sunlight and used a really slow shutter speed so that I could capture the petals in motion, trying to highlight the chaotic nature of our world at the moment. And then working in Photoshop, I began to combine these headlines and maps, focusing on what was happening that day and began to print them out. And most of the time I would manipulate them so they would become more than just a chart. And then on top of that, I would spray them with water to distress them and, and soften the paper. So after I did a series straight down of, pa of the paper, I decided that I wanted to look at the subject in a different way and started suspending the paper against white. And what I would do is I'd shoot a couple of images uh, process them, layer them. If I didn't like what I saw, then I would, I, I would repeat this process until I've, I created an image that I was happy with the results. And as much as I liked the ethereal feeling of the white, I thought I had to try a black background. And over time I came to realize that this was the approach that conveyed much of what I was feeling about the pandemic. I ended up shooting more photographs than I care to admit and decided I needed to edit them down and figured out how to best look at this entire project. So in January of 2021, I signed up for a workshop with Michael Foley, his X lab And it was through this monthly class that this series evolved. One of the most important things that I realized through our critiques was that what I was trying to convey about COVID was not clear enough for people to understand. So with a lot of resistance, I finally sat down and wrote captions for each of the photographs to describe simply what they were about. And then, so, and so this is what, at the end of our workshop, we had a, sh a show at Michael Foley's gallery, and this was one of the images that hung, and I printed the copy next to the photograph. And it was there that I met Frank, finally. <laughs> I have to hear your name for so many years. <laughs> We were reunited. So through this process, I came to realize that what I had created was a visual diary of the pandemic. And by the end of, the, of this workshop, I decided that the best way to organize it was as a book. I contacted a friend who was a, a very talented designer and to see if she would work on the book with me. And she uh, agreed to do it. It's Beth, still Beth, Beth, just let me ask you, how did how did the the process of starting now to write, you know, affect you? You know, writing captions for the images something you, you had never done before. Can you can you speak to that challenge? Sure. 
Um, what I did was, you know, I, I had to, I had to kind of go back and pull the images up and I dragged all the sheets of paper that I had, cause I've saved everything. And I, I, I kind of looked at them and thought about it, what I was feeling when I took that photograph and then put down all my ideas. Mm-hmm. And then it was kind of a mess. And I, uh, was really lucky and my 23 year old niece, who's a writer and a a comedian moved to New York and was living with me. And I said, can you help me edit these? And the two of us sat down and edit and spent a couple of days and edited them. So, and and by the time we were done, it was like, oh, I I can see how I can do this now. You know, and it really kind of made them much stronger and much more interesting. She, she said the most amazing thing to me. She said, you know, you've written it in three different ways. You've written it personally, objectively, and scientifically. And we have to pick one direction to go in. And, and that really kind of helped me focus me. Okay. Now I, got, I lost my place on my, on my notes. Um, so the one thing that I, when, when I was having a hard time writing at first, I thought, why don't I take photographs that can go with the COVID pictures? And I did a series of photographs of shadows in my studio, uh, and then put little bits in it and, uh, they never worked. Everybody rejected them. And then I, but when I started working with Sally, my designer, I sent them to her to see if she could have, um, if she could use them in any way. And she thought, she fell in love with them and thought, these are great. And what they, uh, what, by using them, what we, we've done is we've kind of put them throughout the book. It tells, it gives you a sense of time passing, you know, and, and really as, because the shadows keep moving and it tells you that Time is passing and, and this is my pandemic story. Um, so just as I explained where I was watching the pandemic, I, wanted, I want this book to also kind of have the, pro, you know, the beginning of it explain what has transpired. So we started with February 29, 2020, Washington state declares emergency, first step, attributed to COVID-19 in Seattle area. And then March 12, 2020, the US to suspend most travel from Europe as world scrambles to fight pandemic, quoted from the New York Times. And then in March March 20th, 2020, the New York State Governor's Office issued an executive order closing non-essential businesses. So this is kind of the basic layout um, where we have an image and the shadow picture. And it, and it, every picture is dated and then it has a title. So this uh, photograph is, was shot April 8th, 2020, and it's called the uh, Economics of Safety. I'm encouraging New Yorkers to go on with their lives and get out on the town. Mayor de Blasio. Um, What I also wanted to do is I wanted to, by I put a lot of motion into these photographs. I wanted to kind of create this kind of uh, chaotic sense that we were all living with, that we were stuck in our homes and yet the world was kind of spinning out of control around us. This one is May 9th, 2020 called Current Headlines. Health experts overwhelmed, outbreak surge, numbers spike, rare syndromes. So this was one where I took headlines and created a, um, a piece of paper, you know, on vellum for me to photograph. And then we weren't even, you know, at this point we were still hiding in our apartments and not going out. So I went on the roof of my building where there was a bush that was dead and I broke twigs off of it and brought it down to my little studio in my apartment. June 14th, 2020, COVID symptoms. As of now, it affects the brain, eyes, 
knows blood. How the virus won. The big cities are exploding. So this was you know, part of what I, um, you know, we all sat at our computers ordering things to our homes because we couldn't go out and buy anything. And I went online to Amazon and I decided I wanted a little turntable. And I ordered this little turntable and then I set my set on top of it and I would turn it slowly as I was doing timed exposures. And I would sh sometimes shoot static pictures, sometimes moving pictures, and then I would combine them in Photoshop. July 8th, false hopes. Cases continue to surge. We were told the virus would be short-lived, but it continues to ravage our city without an end in sight. August 13th, 2020, realism. Whether you believe or not, the consequences are the same. September 20th, 2020, tracking the spread over state lines from family member to family member. October 14th, 2020, where the virus was. After a summer of some respite, it is building again. So Beth, at this point, we're using the turntable all the time. I was using it a lot. <laughs> the, the last one was. And then, but then I, I keep changing. So yeah. um, I kind of, you know, I kept looking at the charts and maps and they began to be somewhat similar. And then what caught my eye was um, the images of people that had passed, that had died from COVID. And the, the news media were doing these grids. And I thought, these are super interesting. Why don't I, print, why don't I um, start printing those out? So that's, that's what this photograph is about. It's about lives lost. And it's US 25,000, the world 1.5 million dead. So this, you know, this was hung rather than um, on the turntable. And then I would, move, I would move the papers. And I eventually, you know, I had strings and wires and all sorts of things in there and, and eventually decided that I didn't like them and we touched them out. November 23rd, 2020, death ripples. A maraud of faces, families in mourning. December 1, 2020, on his watch, all preventable had it not been politicized. December 4th, 2020, it's lockdowns, cases, deaths, cases exponentially grow. So these were, these were suspended on wire. I kind of, I decided I wanted to kind of see if I could animate them on wire. And then we shot, I shot the shadow pictures with shadows of wire so they could be married together. January 7th, 2021, the wait. Healthcare workers, nursing home residents, over 75 essential workers, politicians. January 9th. 2021, vaccine versus COVID proteins. So these are all the names of different kinds of vaccines, they're scientific names, the mRNA vaccine, which we know. The next one is the Janssen COVID-19 vaccine. The next one's AstraZeneca. And the last one's the Sinopharm. You know, I had um, bought these leaching nuts, which, I had, you know, kind of let dry in my home, and I began to realize that they look like the COVID um, cell, you know, the COVID drawings, and they became really a big tool in my photographs to try and convey COVID. 
January 15, 2021. Vaccine myths. Rushed and unsafe. Change your DNA. Leave a microchip. Cause infertility. January 19, 2021. Uneven distribution. As the needle went in, the guilt began. Now protected while so many are not. Slow rollout. February 2nd, 2021. More knowledge, less fear. New discoveries bring hope. February 14th, 2021. Those we've lost. State administrator, Wonderama host, nightclub owner, school teacher, NBA reporter, tango star, Navy vet, Latino judge, photographer, of Asian American wife. So I don't Beth, know. What? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I, so as you're going through this, you're very much being in touch with the with the news, right? With what right. the media with what the media is is saying. So how do you how do you filter out the political side of it? Because which is really wonderful here, because you're just doing the headlines, which is perfect, and you're not getting involved in the left and the right. Well, I, I mean, start. I start to. Okay. <laughs> I start to, you know, in terms of the pandemic, uh, I think the, there was one back, wasn't there? Let's see if I go back. If I'm remembering correctly. This one on the left, December 1st, on his watch, all preventable right. had it not been politicized. And that's actually a picture that I took of Trump that I inverted and printed out. And then that's a photograph of all the people who have passed from COVID. Mm, okay. And then, and then items that I had kind of collected over a period of time. So is that a clear decision while you're doing this? not to go too far in the political space as you were starting this or or that just evolved for you it just evolved and then further yeah. in it starts it starts to come more okay so i think because i was in such shock <laughs> and, oh, and, yeah. and in a way it was so painful what was happening in our government in terms of our COVID. i felt like i was grappling with it personally for myself more than anything mm. in the beginning. <clears throat> um, especially because we were in New York and in every, you know, I remember talking to an insurance sales, an insurance agent, because um, I was trying to make a claim and he's like, I'm in Illinois. I don't understand why I have to be shut down. You know, and we're and I said, you have no idea what's coming. <laughs> it's like, oh no, we'll be fine. <laughs> and whereas in New York we were we were so isolated. You know, so I was more focused on New York for a while. Right. Okay. So, and, and this one, those who've lost, that was, you know, New York Times had this rolling screen where they would just list people who had died and their pictures. And so I started screen grabbing people off of that and kind of, again, creating these documents. March 10th, 2021, what separates us now? Hard to recognize a face or engage without a smile. So at this, at this stage, then I kind of gave up with layering photographs and just started working with pure motion in the, in the suspended um, pieces of paper. So I would shoot these multiple times until I kind of got everything in the place that I thought looked interesting. Okay. March 20th. 2021. He never wore protection. The death toll is what it is. President Trump. See, here's my political statement. Amazing. March 23rd, 2021. Family on hold. No touching, no hugging, no visits. Mm. April 12th. 2021, the beginning of the end. Each day, shots go into arms. And April 18th is what to believe. 
your area is at a very high risk level, indoor restaurants are now open. Remember when they, we had no idea what, what to believe. Life with protection, April 20th, 2021. Fog glasses and dry hands yearning to smell spring. Senseless deaths. If only we had embraced masks as a country. June 2nd, 2021, conflicting guidance, masks. You know what, I think it skipped one. There, it did. May 13th, 2021, the slow recovery. We have all longed for this moment. CDC Director Rochelle Wolinski. June 2nd, 2021, conflicting guidance. Masks, no masks, masks, no masks. July 27th, 2021, anger. Rights and liberties of the vaccinated, rights and liberties of the unvaccinated. July 29, 2021, fear grows, new variants emerge. August 1st, 2021, the repetitive nature of COVID, anxiety, isolation, sickness, death. <clears throat> August 19th, 2021, separate truths. Pfizer vaccine approved, ICUs filling up. September 1st, 2021, the different reality of statehoods, a pandemic of the unvaccinated, President Biden. September 13th, 2021, new normal, apps, cards, mandates. And then this is the artist statement that will be in the back of the book. You know, and now that I see these all put together in this form, I, I, you know, they created this visual diary for me and they're really a reflection of the politics of the time and the way it has affected our everyday lives. And that's it. Wow. wow. So did, as you were going on with this Beth, did it, the writing become easier for you or it became clearer for you? How did that work for you? It became clearer so that um, what I shot up through April and, uh, and you know, it was, I think, yeah, April, cause I had this presentation I had to do so um, for this class. So that writing was extremely difficult to do, but by the end of it, it was getting a little better. And then, I continue shooting um, and when I went circle back to do the later ones, it was easier to write because we kind of established a way, a, a way of speaking in the, you know, in mm. the writing, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, for you personally, you know, being a commercial photographer for so many years, to take on such an editorial project was that, um, was it easy, difficult, you know, um, emancipating, you know, to have really like you're directing everything as it relates to this and, you know, it's coming from your heart and your soul. How was that for you? Um, it was, it was, uh, well, I, you know, um, and I have to step back a bit because in 2000, you know, I always took pictures for myself. Um, and then I would photograph them, I would print them and they go into boxes and nobody ever saw them. 
Uh, and then in 2016, I did a workshop in France and I brought everything and they helped me kind of put it together. And by that experience, I thought, okay, now I kind of, now I understand what I need to do. And, and then after that happened, my, both my parents passed away three days apart in different mm -hmm. states and different countries, you know, and my, and I was, uh, I inherited my mother's home and I knew that she had a lot of stuff, but I had no idea what, that she was such a hoarder. And she had things from my past, you know, she and my dad had been divorced for 50 years and she had all this stuff with my father and, and things I didn't even know. So I, I took all of this and I, I spent a, a couple of years doing a series called Memory of Absence. So I say this because I, I, that was kind of my real entree to not working with anybody and just doing my own thing. I, I think what was exciting for me with this series was that everything was so out of focus. You know, coming from the still life uh, food world where everything had to be sharp and you wanted, you need the center focus and all that stuff. It was very freeing to like express my uh, feelings through an image that's in motion. Um, and, and I think that was a big change for me. And, 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 you know, and now I'm back taking pictures that are in focus again, but, but it, it was a very freeing experience. And can you talk, can you speak to some, uh, Robin put in a question, speak more about your shooting process? Sure. Um, are there certain images? Cause they, they're different, they're different images. You know, some of the images were, um, something like this was uh, a piece of paper with the stick stuck through it that I suspended against a black background. And I, you know, in front of a window daylight. Um, and then I would uh, make it move and do timed exposures. Mm -hmm. And I just kept doing it until I found the image that I really liked. So I might take, I might take 40 pictures or like the one with Trump's picture in it that I took three, you know, it just depends. And then something like this is a uh, multiple, you know, I kind of laid the piece of paper down on, on the black surface and was looking down on it. And I shot it static. And then I just kind of moved the surface back and forth, which kind of created this effect. And then I was layered in Photoshop until it looked interesting to me and try and convey the feeling that I was looking for. Let's see. You know, one thing, you know, we spoke about that before, you know, what, you know, what led you to take these workshops? You know, here's a seasoned veteran, you know it all, you've done it all, right? I mean, can, can you, you know, to inspire the rest of us that you <laughs> were never too seasoned to, uh, to learn, to be inspired, you know, these workshops that you've taken over the years, and I assume you, you'll take more, um, you know, what was the value to that as it relates to this project? Um, you know, I think, I don't know about other people, but for me, uh, there are two things. You know, when you do a commercial job, you have a layout and, you're, and you, have, you have a place that you're aiming towards, you know? You're, uh, you know that you have to create a photograph that's gonna sell a product. So that I, that, I learned I had down, you know, it was, I felt really confident doing that. What I didn't feel confident was doing things purely for myself and having it hold together as a body of work. Because when you do a commercial job, it's like one, two, three photographs, and then you're on to the next thing. So I kind of had to learn how to work through a project. Cause I, I never, other than doing a book, a cookbook, I never really, taken a project for myself and done a body of work. Um, and the workshops were really helpful at helping me put them together to figure out uh, what I was trying to say and, um, and how, to, how, how focused I would need to be. And, and the thing is like with, you know, with, uh, this, with this experience with the COVID diary, 
as well as with the memory of absence. I remember taking the memory of absence back to France and I showed, I showed it to uh, the, the mentors there and nobody and everybody and nobody got it. And I had a portfolio review a couple months later and I thought, I got, you know, I gotta make this into something. And I went back in my studio and I spent uh, a month and a half trying many different things until I figured out how to make it work. Um, and, I, and I feel like this is the same thing. Like the, the workshops uh, kind of show you what's working, what isn't working. Cause it's, I don't know about you but it's very hard to be objective about my own work. And, th and then I could take that feedback and say, oh, that's not working. How can I make this work? How can I make it clear that this is what I want to say? And That's a I mean, long, how, long. yeah, and, and so this personal work, how does that affect moving forward your commercial work? You know, when I started, I, I you know, when I first started, I did these these photographs of dried flowers. I did a, it was a, I remember that, yeah. you know, and it was on some leaves, and I mailed it out, and I started getting work, and. What, what the pandemic has kind of allowed me to do is almost take a break and go back to what I love doing, which is taking photographs. And, you know, instead of what, you know, I was so obsessed with, okay, I need a new egg photograph. I need a new meat photograph. And they, you know, they, to me, they start to look all the same. And I thought, I just need to take pictures of what I want to take pictures of. And that will bring the work because it always has. So that's what I did. That's, so how, that's, that's like, how I look at it. So, so that's the old lesson comes back again, right? You know, shoot mm -hmm. what you like and people will love that and you'll get work from that. Yeah. Right? I mean, we, we've said that for forever. Forever. And, it, and, you know, I've been doing this forever. And, uh, you know, I, I go back to some of my original ideas. Like uh, now I've been shooting dried flowers again because I want to see how I think about them and how I look at them and how I can make them into something different than what I've done before. Um, and I'm never, you know, I'm never bored. I mean, I love doing it. It's, you know, a passion of mine. You never pictures. worked a day in your life, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, there were days. There were definitely <laughs> days. <laughs> uh, that's great. Well, yeah. Beth, I can't tell you. Uh, so how can people get the book? Um, they can email me off my website. Uh, you know, we're in the process of uh, getting it done. It's not quite up on my website yet, but you can go to my website and email me and I, I'm making a list and uh, I will put a, as soon as we have this done, I'm gonna put a, you know, a book up on the website for people okay. to see. And, and if you could just put your email and your website in the chat room. Yep. I that would can. be great. So everyone could, uh, everyone could get it there. Okay. Beth, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you doing this for us tonight. It was really uh, terrific. It's, a, um, you know, a, a long time coming for you to be here. Thank you so much. It was really a pleasure. Really yeah. a pleasure. Cool.